All right. So now that we've added our first style to the page, the next thing we can start doing is just styling things however we want. First, I want to remind you exactly how CSS works. Let's just take a look at the anatomy of a CSS selector really quickly. I'm just going to make a new page here. When you have a CSS rule like this, I'll make this full screen so we can see it easier. A CSS rule, it's made of three parts basically. The selector, which is something like H1, and we create squiggly brackets after that. Let's do a little squiggly like this. And then below that, let's create another little squiggly down here to end the CSS rule. Inside that, we have a declaration. A declaration just means we're going to use a property, something like color, which is called a property, followed by two colon, by a colon, excuse me, just one colon. And then the value. In this case, the value is going to be red. That's called the value. And we end each declaration with a semicolon, just like this. And that right there is our first CSS rule. Now we can put as many declarations in there as possible. This whole thing is a declaration. We can put as many of these inside our CSS rule as we want. But if you put too many, it gets a little bit out of hand. So having a little high-level overview of the vocab might make this a little easier because I'm about to lay down a ton of CSS. So let's get back to it. Inside my style.css page, let's start playing around with a little bit of styles. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some styles for my entire page. We do that by selecting the body, creating the open squiggly brackets, and the closing squiggly brackets. And if I want to make the background color a different color, I just type in background uh, dash color colon, let's say light blue. And bam, instantly my entire page is now light blue, the background. Beautiful. That looks a little more popping. I like it. Below that, my H1, I'm actually going to make it bigger too. I'm going to make the font size font dash size and I'm gonna make it 40 px 40 px actually stands for pixels pixels refer to a tiny little dot on this page and we'll talk more about those later but for now just understand it as a unit of measurement that can determine how big things can be I can make this 10 pixels 20 pixels 30 pixels 40 50 60 70 you get the picture we can make this thing really big but we're gonna stick with 40 for the time being then I can actually change the font as well. We do that by selecting the font family property. And let's go with something like uh, Helvetica because that's nice. Boom. Now we have a Helvetica styled title. The last thing I want to do is if we look at this page right here and I refresh my big page, it's nice, but I want my H1 to be centered. To do that, I'm going to say text dash align colon center. And I'm going to save this. And if I go back to my other page and I refresh it, you'll notice silly animals is now centered. And that looks like a pretty fly header. Now the rest of my page still isn't styled, but it, we're getting there. We're getting closer and closer. Now below the H1, if we look at our images here, they're so big that we actually can't see them all at once. And I don't like that. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to create a selector for my image tags. How do I do that? What do I write out? That's right. IMG. And we follow that with what? Open squiggly and closing squiggly. Now, if you want to make images smaller, we're going to use a property called width. And I can make the width whatever size I want. In this case, we're going to start with something really small, like 20%. Now, we can use pixels here too, but just percentages is just an easier way to think about how big they are. So if I make this 20%, save it, and go back to my page, now my pictures appear right next to each other, and I can kind of see them in the order I've, I've put them down. 
this is nice. This looks a little bit better. Okay. So now that my image is, uh, let's actually, let's make them like 30%, just so they're a little bit bigger. And hopefully that still looks nice. Uh, let's, you know what? Let's go with 25%. Let's go right in the middle. There we go. Perfect. But I'm actually, I'm going to make this a profile for my silly animals later. So I'm going to come into these images and I'm going to make them circular. If you want to make images circular to look like a Facebook profile pic or something like that, we use a property called border dash radius. And this just says, do we want to round the borders at all? If I put something like 2% and save this, you'll see that the borders, the edges, the corners are a little bit rounded. But I want this to be circular. So I can come back in here and I'm not just 2%. Let's go with 50%. And if I save that, you'll notice that now my pictures kind of look like profile pictures. This could be your uh, Instagram pic if you want. The shark with human teeth. That looks fly. Now the reason why the bird looks a little bit oval is because the picture is actually taller than it is wide. And this picture of the shark is a perfect square. So the perfect squares are going to be better for border radius 50% type uh, styles. Okay. Now we've got some additional styles added to our page. It's starting to look a little bit better, but we can do some work with layout. We want to actually style the header to look like a header. We want to make sure that things are positioned in the right spot. And we're going to do that in the next video.